an ounce. Happy to hear about your bad luck. A tale about finding home. I'm Jim Fugate and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. Have you ever been in one of those situations? You know, you're trying to get somewhere or accomplish a task or or find an answer and you just feel lost or blind. So you stop and you look for help. You try to comprehend where you are and how to get where you need to be, but all you learn is that you cannot remain where you are. So you just keep pressing forward or pressing in the direction that seems like forward with no idea if you'll find what you're looking for. This analogous story explores that situation. It's set in the mid 1800s. A simple farmer was trying to get home on a January evening. Dark seemed to come on earlier than normal. The sky was dim and hazy and there was a cold bite in the air. Gratefully, he was dressed for the cold, but he worried that his family might be getting low on wood for the old cook stove they used to heat their two-room house. The snow began to fall gently like cotton, big wet puffs drifting down and covering the mud-colored snow and ice that had fallen a week before. It had been nice to have a day or two with temperatures above freezing, but the wet, shallow mud was bothersome and left dark stains and puddles along the track he was following to get back home. Maybe he should have left Pritchard's place a little earlier, but the man had provided a good wage for a day's work putting a roof on his grand big new barn. It would be the envy of folks from miles around. The sky got darker, and the few stars that had been lighting a moonless night began to fade. The wind picked up, and for the next few miles, there were no trees or ridges to slow it down. The snowflakes got smaller and began falling faster, whooshing around and coming in sideways with the gusts of icy wind. Pulling his hat down a little, he leaned into it with the realization that this was no little flurry. This was the beginning of a big blow. Growing up in the region, he had experienced it many times before. Terrible storms coming in off the lake and dropping several feet of snow in a few hours and turning everything white and white to the point you could not see more than a few feet in front of you. People died in storms like this. Sometimes when they were caught out in such a blast they just disappeared. They weren't even far from home or shelter. They'd be lost in the white and gone for good. He had a ways yet to go and the snow was starting to make it harder to walk. His fingers were cold and his ears stung. Looking forward, all he could see was the swirling white blizzard. No landmarks, no lights. He was no novice to the cold winters of this region. He knew he was in trouble. There was no shelter to be found. And he knew staying where he was, to wait it out, was not an option. But he had no idea how to get home. He would passed the cutoff to the Smith place a few miles back, so he figured he was closer to home than anywhere else, but home, well, trying to fight it in this world of swirling, windy white, was unlikely. Was he going to be one of those who disappeared? What would become of his little girl and his wife, who was set to deliver their second child soon? How would they stay warm all night, let alone go on keeping up their little farm come spring when it was time to plant? He was feeling pretty hopeless, and defeated, and frightened, but he wasn't ready to give up. As he pushed forward, he cried out a prayer to God, or the Great Spirit, or whatever supernatural power was in charge, pleading to find his home. He needed to take care of his little family. To do that, he needed to live. To live, he needed to get home. But now, home could be anywhere in any direction. Just help me find home, he pleaded, and shouted against the screaming wind. I want to be home. Help me find it, please, he cried in desperation. I can't disappear in the white like this. He kept moving. Suddenly, there was nothing under his feet, and he landed at the bottom of a hole of some kind. Gratefully, the snow broke his fall, but as he struggled to get his feet back under him, he lost one boot and his hat. He thought, so this is it. 
this is how it happens. You get blinded by the snow and fall into a hole and just disappear. And they never find you. Of all the rotten luck. He lay there, trying to catch his breath, trying to comprehend which way was up. But hopeless, and believing it was over for him, he was going to freeze solid right there at the bottom of that hole. Then, after settling a bit, he began to understand what was up and what was down, and he quietly stopped fighting for just a moment. Somehow, the hole he had fallen into seemed familiar. It smelled a little of burned wood. Could it be? In the previous week, as things had warmed up a bit, he had started fires on the ground to help it thaw so he could break through and at least start to dig a new well. He had chosen the site that was about 50 feet from the house, a spot where a dowsing rod had shown great promise. Was this that hole? He gathered himself, found his hat, and stood up, and there it was, his shovel leaning against the sloped wall of the hole, on the side closest to his hole. He dragged himself up out of the hole and started crawling in the direction of home, using the shovel as a probe in front of him to find the house. And there it was. He followed the wall around the outside, searching for the door. So he cried out to his wife. The door opened and he fell through, landing in a heap on the floor. With the shovel still in his hand, he rolled to his back and felt a thump on his chest as his little girl jumped on top of him and gleefully said, Daddy! <laughs> so here's the ounce. Most of the time, when we feel lost, it's best to stop, look, listen, and try to get help. Throw up a signal so someone knows where we are. Help finds a stationary target much faster than a moving one. But on occasion, staying put is just not an option. So you stumble forward in a direction that seems most likely to get you where you need to pee. Life can be like that. Stumbling along blindly or hoping, and then you fall in a hole. And that's it. You're done. It's over. Or is it? There are times when life needs to drop us in a hole, because that's where we can learn where we are and where to go next. Not every bit of bad luck is really bad. If you can step back and examine it, bad luck can show you everything you need to understand. Usually it happens when you don't know you needed to understand anything more. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration.